Hello everyone, my name is Vox. This is going to be my GPD Win Mini review. This is the best handheld I have ever used, and I can't recommend it at all. Right now, I am in Italy on my vacation, and I have recorded a bunch of this prior to coming here, so I've been editing a bit, and right now I'm just recording this part just to have the introduction. We're talking about a few different things here. But there were from a few initial concerns I had, specifically with regard to GPD's use of this 120 hertz screen on here. And I am pleased to report that it's actually a fantastic display. While it doesn't have VRR and it is portrait based, actually it's portrait like this. So the edge lighting is over here and it draws this way. What happens is two things. Number one is because it's a portrait based display and because it's 120 hertz, meaning there's 8.3 milliseconds per frame. What happens is in a game when you're actually moving around and having variable frame rate without VRR, you do get some frame tearing if you don't have VSync on. And with frame taming that happens because it's happening vertically on the device itself, and for the most part, you're always like looking left and right or platforming on the game. When that happens, the tears are kind of lining up a lot. So in this instance, in this like little sample video that I'm showing you here, it becomes hard to see in full motion where the tears happen. Now, while I can notice this happening, I don't find them that egregious. And because of the 120 hertz or 8.3 millisecond frame time, it doesn't really stand out all that much. So I really wouldn't recommend actually setting this to 60 hertz and just keeping it to 120 hertz. But because it's also vertically tearing, it blends in so well, like you can see here, even though that you can clearly point out all of the tears that are happening. So again, even though it's not VRR, I'm kind of okay with just having VSync off and just letting frame rate go nuts. You could also frame cap it at 40 or 60 or 30, and that will fit into 120 fine as well. So the display on this, absolutely fantastic, even without VRR. The trackpad, this trackpad is the best trackpad I've ever used on a Windows laptop ever, outside of maybe Lenovo laptops. When you think about like how good Apple trackpads are, this contends with it. Even just being able to like zoom in, so you can see right there I'm zooming in, and you can kind of like pan around. Every All the multi-touch gestures that are there are so seamless and instantaneous with feedback that there is no fighting with it like you get with traditional trackpads. The controls on this, whole based analog sticks with no dead zone whatsoever, full fidelity, no magnetism, uh, greater than, it's just absolutely sensational. The tension, fidelity, the feel of them, the texture on them, super good, just like the GPD Win Max 2. The D-pad, this is a Vita-like inspired D-pad with Vita-like inspired buttons, so they're dome based, which is my preference. Now, the back buttons, the triggers themselves, the bumpers, they're fine. The triggers right now are a bit too sensitive, meaning that when you press them halfway down, they actually go to full full range. So GPD is already fixing that. That's something that is going to be fixed. This keyboard is a sensational improvement over the GPD Win 2. It is fantastically small with as large a screen possible that with a as big of a battery as possible. This is a 45 watt hour battery effectively, 44 watt hour battery. Around 10% larger battery than both the Ally and the Steam Deck. And yet, I can't recommend it. And the reason is, it just gets too hot. So we're going to go into all the different parts of it. Right now, let's go ahead and just jump into the out of box experience, trying out the grips and my feelings on the grips. And we're going to be talking a little bit more in depth on the controls and how they operate. But then we're also going to be talking about performance as well. So let's get into that. All right, so let's do a very rapid unboxing. Now, obviously, I've already taken out the GPD Win Mini, so we'll go ahead and take out the instruction booklet. Now, the big thing that I wanted to mention here that some people might not be aware of is that they do include a little lanyard for the lanyard holes that are on the front of the GPD Win Mini. They also include a USB-C to USB-A adapter, as well as the USB-C cable, which is fairly long. It's about three feet. And the charging brick itself. And this is what the charging brick spec specifications are. So we can see the output right there is 5 volt at 3 amp, 9 volt at 3 amp, 12 volt at 3 amp, 15 volt at 3 amp, and 20 volt at 3.25 amp. So this is effectively a 65 watt charger so that you can get an understanding of what this is going to be able to do. The other thing that GPD sells is the dedicated grips. Now this is sold separately. So for me, this is something that personally I don't care about. The GPD Win Mini, also the GPD Win 2, I've never felt that they were needed of grips, but there are people that really love having grips on devices. So GPD has accommodated those people by making grips that attach and they are secured by screws. So you will need to actually figure out a way if you want to actually always have these on or not. The screwdriver that GPD included is magnetized a bit, so it's a little bit easier to kind of get this installed. So I'll go ahead and install this right now. So there we have one 
that has been mounted to the device itself. I'll go ahead and screw in the other. All right, there we go. I have just screwed in just here. I didn't bother unscrewing the part for the GPD Win Mini at all. So this is just one screw that's in there and it's pretty secure. So I don't think you really need to go full on out. This is for people that obviously, if you really wanted a, a grip on your GPD Win Mini, this is going to be something that you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and take a look and see how these actually work for a typing experience. And I'll give a brief overview on how the grip feels. All right, so we're going to start the keyboard review off with the grips installed. Now, this is something that I don't actually enjoy using. Now, if you're the type of person that likes grips, you're going to know that you want this or not. So for me, you're looking at a person that is biased against having grips. So I'll give my best opinion as best I possibly can, but it's going to be from someone that doesn't actually use grips whatsoever. This is a little bit small for me, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of maximize this. And I kind of need that because... When I'm looking through my camera's viewfinder, it becomes a little bit extra difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do this as best as I possibly can. So go to the next test here and we'll start typing. A speed was pretty atrocious with these grips on and looking through my viewfinder. You're actually going to care about how this actually works when you're using it for gaming purposes instead of typing. So kind of a negative point of view for the grips for a typing experience. Let me go ahead and remove these and see how well I can type. All right, so here we are without the grips now, so it should be self-evident. For what it's worth, I far prefer using this device without grips. I think it's super comfortable without grips as well. Now, for people that like grips, you should know who you are, and if that's something that you know you're going to like, and if it's going to be very gaming dominant, obviously I'm not going to dissuade you from getting it. But from a keyboard testing thing, it definitely gets in the way because it's something more that you have to get around. Also, I am very right-hand dominant, so I will use the left shift and put my thumb all the way over here to type. Let's go ahead and go to the next test so that I can type here. So we'll go. All right, so my word minute score is about 20% better and my accuracy is up. It's actually difficult for me to type on this device while looking through my viewfinder. So I'm going to actually type on this when I can like just look at the device itself. I'll try to capture a picture uh, because the keyboard is really, really nice to type on. But these types of scores that I'm getting are really low. So I want to have a better result where I'm actually looking at the device and typing. So I'll try to take a picture of that and give you an idea of that. Overall, without the grips, it's far easier to type on this device, and this keyboard really is sensational. Let's start talking about other things on the device itself. All right, so let's start taking a look at the fidelity of the gamepad controls themselves. Now, these are hull-based analog sticks, much like they are on the GPD Win Max 2. So we're going to go ahead and just push these just a little bit just to see where our dead zones sit on the device itself. So I'm going to push a little bit, and you can see that immediately it jumps out of its dead zone so you can see we already got some take a look at the x zero right there pushing just a slight bit gives us full range all right look at that that's very nice let's see how the circularity is on these we extend past the circle here going outside of the circle is something that i very much prefer I know that there are a number of people that really want it to be a circle for whatever reason. There are some games that want it to go outside of the circle. You can see on our right stick that we have a little bit more range. On the left one, we have a little bit less, especially on the top right side of this particular quadrant right there. Now, you can actually recalibrate these sticks using GPD's own software. So if you wanted to tweak these, you can. Let's go ahead and take a look at the fidelity as it applies, as it applies to like snapping. So there is no cardinal snapping at all. There is no magnetism. There is no assistance. It is just full fidelity all around. Once again, these hull-based analog sticks that were also on the GPU Win Max 2, they are really, really good. I'm a big fan of these. When you talk about fidelity and the overall tension, now with potentiometer-based analog sticks, what you wind up having is a tension that's hard in the front, but kind of gets less as you push out. What's nice about these hull-based analog sticks is that the tension typically is consistent throughout. So how that works is really good. Also, these toppers, while they're not my absolute favorite, they are very, very good. So you can see we have a nice ridge around the end for grip, but also there's a convex top. I would prefer concave, but overall, it's still very, very good. So these analog sticks are fantastic. The D-pad, the one thing that was interesting is that the... GPD Win 4 on my prototype, it had a center point that was really high. And then on the production, they lowered it. So they effectively, you could physically like push in on and press all the buttons. They changed that so that only two buttons would ever be pressed at any given time. 
but now they've went ahead and fixed it again so that their center point is once again high, much like how my GPM Max 2 is and how my prototype Win 4 is. And you can see that how this operates, it is very PS Vita-like. So if you liked the PS Vita D-pad, this is one of my favorites and it's super sensational. So this is really good. And on the face buttons over here, once again, these are Vita-like as well. You can actually hear them. So they are dome-based buttons underneath. So there is no membrane here that you would have. Membrane being how they are on the Xbox Series controller. So if we touch here, you can actually feel that they're membrane-based, but they're dome-based for D-pad. The Xbox Series controller is actually fantastic for D-pad and face buttons. Uh, this is much more of a PS Vita-like D-pad and face buttons. So dome-based for both D-pad and the face buttons. This is something that I overall prefer on the back, we have actual... Oh, the other thing here. For the Win 2, there was no clicking L3 and R3. These do work now, so you don't have to have an L3 and R3 button on the back on the shoulders like were present on the GPD Win 2. We have L1 and R1, the bumpers, and they feel really good. These triggers are really excellent. However, I have found that they are a little bit loose, like when I'm actually just using the device, because I could just be like hovering my finger right here, you can actually see that it will already depress. So it is a bit of a trigger finger. Like this is ready to go at any particular given instance. But if we see, if we take a look at the fidelity of it, they're pretty sensitive. So even like halfway pressing down, I get to full coverage here. So I have a lot of travel here. This is something that I would like GPD to kind of tune. I would rather have the full fidelity go from how that looks because I am bottoming out before I even hit like the halfway point on these triggers. So tuning these up would be a benefit. Uh, in my opinion, right now they're way too sensitive and get to 100% way too soon. On the back of the device, you can see we have the typical GPD switch that is for X input and mouse emulation. So if we go ahead and switch this over, you can see that this now becomes mouse emulation. So I'll go ahead and move this around. Oh, <laughs> I am all zoomed in here. Let me go ahead and zoom out. So you can see that this is now mouse emulation and I've already configured my controllers so that this is WASD. So you can see that this is WASD. Over here is my D-pad cursor. Right, so if I do left or right, you can see that that happens. We have, I made this space and I made R3 enter. And the reason that I did this is that if we take a look at it, you can see that if I press these two buttons, what you're gonna see is a Z and X. And if I hold down Y, it's actually left shift and the reason I did that, so this is left control, left shift, Z and X. And the reason that I set it up this way is for older PC games so that you can use the mouse on the right analog stick and you can still left click and right click and still have all of the keyboard functions for older games where it really isn't anticipating a game controller whatsoever. So this is really the ultimate gaming PC in a small form factor. Yes, it's a UMPC like, but it is so good for playing older PC games that I think that this is the absolute pinnacle of design when you want to factor in playing any PC game. So because we have the functionality to customize the mouse mode on the GPD Win Mini, this is also on the GPD Win 4 as well as the GPD Win Max 2, what we can do is we can actually make a custom environment for playing any older PC game and making any of these buttons correspond to whatever keyboard input that the game is looking for. Because a lot of times, a lot of older PC games are looking for ZXCV or left shift or left control, space, enter, escape. Because we have this full complement of controls available to us, the GPD Win Mini, the GPD Win 4, the GPD Win Max 2 are pretty much the only handhelds that are geared to playing older PC games. Now, one of the caveats here that I want to mention is that the GPD Win Mini is using a portrait-based display. It is a 1080p, 120 hertz screen. However, because it's a portrait-based display, if you try to play older PC games on this, you're going to need to run a wrapper, which I've covered a lot in the past. And you can take a look at on my channel to look up how to play old PC games, and it'll go through all the steps that you need to do. So that's the one downside for the GPD Win Mini. While it does have a 120 hertz screen, it is portrait-based. And uh, playing older PC games is going to be kind of a pain to get that set up. But it still remains one of the smallest gaming PCs where you can play any PC game, even if it's like an RTS with using mouse, mouse emulation or even just a touchpad, but you have all the other features as well. So from a control standpoint, this remains one of the best PC gaming handhelds that you can have for a PC gaming perspective. Now, I've already done a lot of benchmarks on 7840U devices, and I've done a lot on GPD 7840U devices. 
There was a time that when I got GPD 7840U WinMax 2 that people said I had a golden sample, but it turns out every GPD device that I've had that has 7840U all perform the same. So when I'm doing on my WinMax 2 or my Win 4, the GPD Win Mini is also performing just the same as all those other devices, meaning it's the best 7040U device that you can possibly get right now. So I'm going to show you a demonstration with real time and I'm going to be talking over it, kind of relating to other things. But if you wanted benchmarks and stuff, that's going to be in my previous videos because largely they're going to be a lot of the same. So we're going to be talking about how this device performs at very low wattages that are better than a lot of other competing devices. And all of GPD's 7840U devices respond like this. All right, let's quickly go through some of my testing methodology. Now, I am on the latest version of Windows 11 22H2. I am also using AMD's latest drivers, which is 23.8.2 drivers. Thankfully, on this 7840U device, they worked no problem. I am running efficient, efficient aggressive on my turbo boost setting. I am running 10 watt, 10 watt on PL1, PL2, and running 10 watt to demonstrate to you on my Batman, Batman Arkham settings, just so you can see that this device, the GPD Win Mini, operates the same as my GPD Win Max 2 and my GPD Win 4 does, both of those 7040U devices. You can see my EPP is uh, Power Saver EPP. You can see that my clock limit is set to default. Most people's 7040U is set by at 4 gigahertz, which is the default for 7040U. I've manually change that to that, and my EPP is 60. So those are my basic settings and how I get it to operate. Let's go ahead and jump into what Batman looks like, and I'm going to kind of do a play-by-play -play just so you guys can understand what's going on. All right, so here is Batman Arkham Knight, and we're going to go to settings real quick. It's going to be a little bit difficult because I have a bunch of HUD stuff up so you can see everything that's going on in real time. But if we go to graphics options, if we go in close, you can see that we are running 720p, VSync is off, max FPS is 90. Everything else is higher set to on and 16 times introtropic filtering. So that is all highest settings as it possibly can go while being at 720p. Those are the settings that I usually use for all of my testing for handheld devices because going to higher resolutions really doesn't help. So we're going to go into this. Now, I would have done further benchmark testing, but truthfully, I've done a bunch of 7840U testing so far. So any of my older videos, you can go and check all my benchmarks that I've done previously, and that'll give you a good understanding of what's going on. Here, I want to show you a early benchmark because a lot of other 7840U devices give up the ghost early and wind up having somewhere around 32 to 36 FPS average by the time this demo ends. You can see that right here. So if you take a look at average, so if you have a 74U device or a 1600U device, if you go ahead and run this benchmark on your device at 10 watt, make sure both PL1 and PL2 are at 10 watt and compare versus what you're going to see here. Now, one of the things that I want to mention is right here, this particular scene is where a lot of different machines give up the ghost and you're going to see FPS tank, but all of GPD's 7840U devices continually perform as optimally as possible. So taking a look right down there, you can see our total system power is around 16.5 watt, 17 watt. So it's in line with other devices. I am not at full brightness here or even half bright. I'm a little bit under half brightness, but you can see that most of the total system power that is on this device, when we push full brightness, it'll actually be using one watt more. And this is more likely re the result of the backlight that is on used on the GPD Win Mini. Additionally, on the center of the device, it gets a little bit hot. We'll talk about that later on in the thermal section. But you can see here, if we take a look at our average, you can see my average is 46, 47. And there you go. There's my average. I do apologize for the lighting here, but again, I'm on vacation right now, so I have to be a little bit rough with how this edit is going. You can see my GPU Win Mini at 10 watt here is getting 47.1 watt but effectively all of them are effectively 100% average. So GPD's 7840U devices across my WinMax 2, my Win 4, and my Win Mini are all performing the same, and these are the best 7840U devices that you can possibly get. Hopefully the real-time demonstration shows you and showing you comparing all the different 7840Us that GPD has made make a compelling argument that GPD just makes really good 7840U devices. Finally, let's get to the part that I can't recommend it. And that is with regard to the heat. Along with the heat, I really wanted to talk really quickly about the fan noise. Now the fan noise that is on the device, when it is less than 10 watt, really it's inaudible, but anything over 10 watt, it becomes distinctly audible. And that's even with like being, you know, 
a, a general distance away from it that it becomes audible. So if you're the type of person that is very, very sensitive to fan noise, this device isn't going to be for you regardless of the heat issues that I'm going to be talking about in a moment. Really the best with regard to fan noise is probably the Asus RG Ally, where at low wattages it becomes very, very inaudible, even around 15 watt or so. So in that respect, if you're looking at fan noise, I would probably recommend the Asus RG Ally. Whereas if you're going to run this less than 10 watt, yeah, you're going to have a fun, fine time. Personally, I recommend running this at 13 watt and nothing higher in a handheld state. But even running at 13 watt past an hour, what winds up happening is these, these sections right here wind up getting blazingly hot. And that is really what kills the entire experience for me when trying to recommend this device is that I'm often just touching these areas and constantly noticing how absolutely hot it gets. And this is a step above warm, far above warm, where it gets ludicrously hot, where if you're touching this, it feels like it's going to burn. Um, I don't think it will, but keeping my finger on there, it is it, not comfortable in any regard. Like I felt warmth before on devices and have been fine with it with regard to the compact size of this. But even at 13 watt over one hour, what I'm finding is literally I played Starfield for like three hours straight and I found that the device just in this area got too hot. The bottom plastic shell, I have never actually found to be a problem running 13 watt for more than an hour. It gets warm, but not uncomfortable warm. Now, there is a reason why I can only say that this video is a preview, and that's because GPD is actually working on trying to fix this heat problem. So they're trying to add some insulation on the inside to prevent heat from going to the outside. You don't really have to worry so much about the heat kind of going back internally because the heat that is done in on the internals are fine. When we take a look at the heat that is expressed on there, going from uh, 10, 15, 20, 25 watt, we're pretty much always going to be under 80 degrees Celsius. At 30 watt, I was recording what was pretty much over 85 degrees Celsius at over 30 minutes. So I really wouldn't recommend pushing this device to 30 watt. Instead, I would say that if you're going to be in a dock situation and you wanted to run this device at 25 watt, that's fine. And it'll be just fine internally for handling those temperatures. Specifically, if you wanted to be running the device at 25 watt while using the Oculink connector on the back of here. Now, I haven't had a chance to test Oculink on this just yet because unfortunately I had to go to Italy. So when I get back, I'll be taking a look at Oculink on this device a little bit more further. And hopefully we'll be able to have a bit of a better understanding of GPD's insulation that they've applied to this device to see if they can prevent heat from generating on the front panel. But that is pretty much the main reason why I can't recommend it. I wish for the best gaming and it was 70, 40 you plus 7 inch and 120 hertz. And I don't want any garbage and I don't want to turn into a head flip myself. And I don't want any other weird surprises. You got it? Hey! But that's really what it comes down to. The heat is so bad that I can't recommend this amazing device. It's kind of a bummer and a monkey ball situation. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time. And thanks for watching.